Mobile testing on emulators and simulators. Smartphones are structurally and logically different from computers. You can resize a browser window to check how the layout looks, but it is not enough for testing other features. QA engineers need specific devices to test software properly. Today, I will tell you briefly about virtual devices, an alternative to a real smartphone QA engineers often use in testing. A virtual device is software you can run on a personal computer to mimic the behavior of a particular smartphone. It gives an idea of how a program will run on a designated device, even if you do not have that device in possession. Virtual devices have a couple of significant advantages. They are highly available and good for early testing, prototyping, and debugging. Virtual devices suit for lengthy tests, provide quick results, and support CI systems. Besides, it is time and cost consuming to get all the existing phone models to run proper testing. There are two types of virtual devices. Emulators and simulators. An emulator imitates features of another device. It mimics both the software and hardware of a target device. Thanks to this, you can understand how real software and hardware would behave. A simulator replicates software only. It mimics various product configurations that exist in the real environment. It is easy to emulate Android devices and almost impossible to emulate iOS phones. As a result, QA engineers use emulators for Android and simulators for iOS. First, let's talk about emulators for Android. Smartphones and computers are powered by different processor families. Each processor works on ISA, short for Instruction Set Architecture. It is a set of machine language commands a processor understands. To mimic software and hardware of a target mobile device, emulators recreate a phone processor on a computer. For this, they have to translate the instruction set architecture of a smartphone into the one a computer uses. This process known as binary translation slows down an emulator's performance. Meanwhile, iOS devices use proprietary chipsets and custom binaries. Besides, you need Apple's native Cocoa API to recreate GUI and other elements of an iPhone. Thus a simulator sits on top of a Mac computer, mimicking software behavior by using computer resources. The iOS simulator is significantly faster than the Android emulator, purely because there is no machine language translation involved. That can be a bit overwhelming right now. Don't worry. You will find the article with more information in the description. Now, it is time to move to differences between emulators and simulators on the screen. Emulators mimic software and hardware, Simulators mimic software only. Emulators model real-life conditions. Simulators don't follow the rules of the real environment. Emulators are written in machine-level assembly languages. Simulators are written in high-level languages. Emulators are slower due to binary translation. Simulators don't need binary translation. Emulators are used to test how software interacts with hardware or a combination of software and hardware. Simulators allow you to check how software behaves with external environments and applications. Despite all the pros of virtual devices, there are some features you cannot replicate in a virtual environment. You can see the list with some of them on the screen. Therefore, virtual devices don't always provide accurate results for compatibility and performance testing. Last but not least, where to get virtual devices. As a rule, they are provided by manufacturers. I would recommend using BrowserStack. It is a compromise between real and virtual devices. You can test mobile apps on real devices via BrowserStack app live. Please, find the link to the app live in the description. Apps are uploaded to real devices with various browsers installed on them. As a result, QA engineers can check its performance and native features like geolocation, camera, and connectivity without still having a device in hand. To sum up, each tool has its place in the software development pipeline. And as the experience shows, using a combination of real and virtual devices is the best solution. Thank you for watching the video and come back for more.